there are certain things we're certain about. Climate is warming. It's warming in ways we haven't seen for thousands of years, maybe millions of years. Those changes are going to lead to unprecedented changes in the landscape that will affect people, including changing forest fires, changing drought, changing agriculture. I'm Jason McLaughlin. I'm a paleoecologist at the University of Notre Dame Department of Biological Sciences. When the kids born today have their grandchildren, what kind of landscape are they going to be experiencing? The reason why that matters is because we're perturbing the Earth systems in ways that we never have. What we're really trying to do is look backwards in order to look forwards. Uh, we're trying to understand the future by looking to the past. If you want to know how much the climate is going to change in the next hundred years, you have to look back all the way to the end of the last ice age. That's the last time that climate warmed as fast and as much as it's going to warm in the next hundred years. What are some ways that the biosphere... Paleon is an international effort to bring paleoecologists, statisticians, and ecosystem modelers together to forecast the future of ecosystems and climate. It's funded by the Macro Systems Biology Program of National Science Foundation, and it's funded by the Environmental Change Initiative at University of Notre Dame. Our goal is to create confidence in our understanding of how these systems work so that people can make the tough decisions about how to manage forests or how to manage our energy, whether we should be growing corn or wheat in the, in the Midwest. If you're the National Forest Service that owns this land, their job is to manage a system that has never existed before. So what should their goals be? Should they allow fires to come through or should they set fires or should they restrict fires? Right now, managers make that decision based on what they envision to be sort of the normal state of the forest. That state will not exist in a hundred years. A lake is kind of like a natural archive or a natural garbage can. It's collecting everything in the watershed around it that blows into or falls into that lake. And at the bottom of the lake is a column of mud that's been accreting over here over the last nine or 10,000 years. We'll take a raft out into uh, the center of the lake and we'll drop a uh, aluminum wedge filled with dry ice and alcohol into the upper sediments. The sediments will then freeze to the outside of that wedge and we'll pull it up and have a frozen record of sediment going back to earlier in time. If we take a sediment core from a lake, we can get a record going back from the present to 8,000 years ago when these lakes first formed at the end of the Ice Age. By looking at the chronological sequence through the different layers of, of mud and looking at the changes in the pollen and looking at the changes in the, the plant debris, we can infer the history of the, of the forests in the region. A lake is like a time machine, and so are the trees themselves. They're drilling into the trees themselves, they're counting the tree rings, and that part of the project is where we're using um, information about the annual growth of the trees to get at the question of are these trees um, taking up carbon year by year. So we take an increment borer, which is just a hollow tube that's sharp on one side, and we screw it into a tree to extract a small sample of the tree ring widths going back from the present to the birth of that tree, which could be as old as 300 years. One of the most important products of the Paleon project so far is, is sociological and interpersonal. I would love to take a full year. We're taking several different scientific communities who normally live in their own worlds with their own colleagues and speak their own individual unique language and we're putting them all in a room together and fostering or creating the environment for conversations among those different groups to happen. The greatest insight that Paleon has given me is the possibility of taking the history of these woods and projecting them forward in useful ways into models. That's never been attempted before because it's never been possible before.